the experience at floors is magnetic and it's contagious and people that have been there and people that have experienced the music that comes off that stage there at Forest Country Store uh, is unforgettable. Well, when she wrapped her loving arms around my neck, I should have turned her away, but how was I to see? I was firing, she was gasoline. Sitting here at the center of Texas country music, a place we like to call John T. Floors Country Store. Sometimes I walk in here shaking and trembling from the history on the walls. Don't take too close a look, you might get intimidated by all the legends that have graced this stage. Cause I'm still firing, you're still gasoline. Yeah, I was firing, you was gasoline. I was firing you as gasoline. Can you remember the first time you went to Flores? Well, you got to remember back then how rural Flores was. And that's where everybody got their groceries and that's where everybody met. And I think the post office, I think, was in there for when I was a kid. This was out in the country and the roads weren't all that good in those days, you know, when I first started going out in, in the in the 60s. It was an excursion, you know, to get, get you had to really want to be somewhere uh, to do it. But it was, it was always worth it because uh, of the music. This was always a, a place, too, that was more than just the Friday, Saturday, Sunday music, you know, there'd be a high school reunion, wedding reception, all kinds of different reasons you would come out here. The hippies and the rednecks came together because of the music and I think the venue, because at that time it was kind of a turbulent time in the late 60s and 70s, you know, with uh, the Vietnam War and protests and all this stuff going on. But the music brought everyone together, you know, when you walked into floors it was just there was no politics it was about being there at that moment watching that band play i met john t floors yeah he was uh, the proprietor there when we first came in i'm six foot six and uh, he was six foot six i just remember he was real big <laughs> I know he was a big scary man, and he had a lot of friends, and he had a lot of friends in high places. John T. helped buy our Little League uniforms, and he helped another lady get going with the scouts. You wouldn't think this roadhouse hell raising honky tonk on the weekends, and the guys helping the scouts, you know, same, same guy, but you know, welcome to Texas. <laughs> the funniest thing I ever think I ever saw at Flores was a hundred dollar fine for fighting. There was this box that was the jail. And I guess if it got to old man floor, it was six big old man and he'd throw them in the box. Back then, in the, that was such a unique time because on the radio, AM radio, way before FM radio, they played a lot of instrumental music. So if you're a young guitar playing kid, you could learn, you know, you listen to the radio and go, I can kind of play that. And suddenly you're hired and you're in a band playing that stuff you heard on the radio for all these young women. <laughs> and it was always an honor to, to get on this stage back here where so many legendary people, you know, you got to pick up your game when you walk in the door, you know. What year was that that you played for us the first time? 52. You played for us in 1952. Sundays. Oh, we didn't get paid. <laughs> I don't remember if we put a tip jar out there or not. To be honest. We didn't care, we just wanted to go play. This is one of the legendary, you know, dance halls. You can't recreate a place. You can try to, to get, you know, hang a bunch of uh, real or imagined memorabilia on a wall, on a tin wall or barn wood or something. You look around floors and you realize you can't duplicate this. There's a reason why 
you know, Willie Nelson wrote a song about John T. Floor, you know, and, and there's a reason why acts big and small want to play places like this on their way up and even after they hit the top, people will come, you know, Willie Nelson will still play here, you know, Lyle Love will probably still play here. It's part of the fabric of not just entertainment, but of, of uh, American culture, you know, particularly Texas culture. Flores has the history, you know, Willie Nelson and everybody, Roger Miller, anybody you can think of played here and wanted to play here, went out their way to play this joint. The Willie Nelson that we all know and love, this is where he emerged, you know. When he came back from Nashville, Flores was where he would have big crowds. He hadn't played in a while, not here, it would, well here, plus the IRS was on him. They did not let him play any gigs, so. But they allowed him to get his first gig from having all that happen to him was here. The reputation, like I say, anybody who was anybody played there, Willie and Waylon, and it was a mythic in proportion, biblical. <laughs> it was just a cool place to play. You know, it still is, you know, but back then it was just like, you know, that was uh, a point of like, say, well, hey, I'm, uh, I've, I've made it in a way in this world. Hello, my name is Robert Earl Keen, and the story I'm about to tell you, I would like to title it, The Roadside Honky Tonk That Made an Entire Career. Early 90s, the booking agent that I worked with at the time, Denise Stiff, said what we need to do is uh, create a scene, an event for you, and she made up this whole idea called the World Tour of San Antonio. We were going to do five nights in a row, but we really wanted to make sure that it was going to be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and we didn't really have a Sunday play. And I thought, that place, Flores Country Store, right there, you know, next to Highway 16, that's the place to go. We created the World Tour of San Antonio, and the crown jewel of the whole thing was playing there at Flores Country Store the very last day of the World Tour on Sunday afternoon, and there were people already parked all along the street. There was, you know, a thousand plus people at Flores Country Store the first time I ever played there. That is not only the little roadside honky-tonk that made a career, but it is the roadside honky-tonk that made my career. Favorite time at Floors? I'd have to say all of the Ben, ben Dorsey days were favorites for me. Like, I know that sounds cliche, but the, that first one, man, was... The shit-eating grin on his face yeah. was just to die for. He was and so excited, that he, especially that first one. Yeah, he couldn't believe that he had a whole day just for him. And then he sat up there on stage with us during the show. And yeah, Ben Dorsey was the world's oldest roadie, and he had worked from John Wayne to Johnny Cash to Willie for years, and he worked for Wade and I for years, and to his ripe old age of 92. 92, yeah. Uh, he, was ingrained in the fabric of this place. He he was Floor's Country Store. We're in the Ben Dorsey room. Green. Yeah. yeah. And then the first time I played here was with the Gourds, and I was so excited to play the, the venerable, legendary John T. Floor's Country Store. I was so excited. And I'll never forget that feeling. It was, it was like a kid on Christmas walking in there, you know? Those walls were so much vibe in the place. If you know any of the history, you feel it when you walk into place. I hope that places like this, you know, I hope they, they stay forever because it's it's important for music. What, no matter what you're playing, it's important to have a place to go play your shows. It's like a religious experience, you know, or like a, like a family reunion playing at this joint. It's not that these other shows and these other places in America don't mean anything. They mean a whole lot, but uh, Floors just means more, it just does. John T was a number one character, but he was good to us. Congratulations, 80 years, man, that's longer than me. <laughs> I've been there a pretty good part of that 80 years of Holotus, but yeah, I have great memories of Floors, and thank God you guys keep it going. Be in business for 80 years, with live music and food, you know, it's just, well, you know, that's borderline miraculous, you know. Congratulations to Flores for hanging on. This 80th 
anniversary, it's not just another milestone or gold star on the calendar. This is an amazing feat to have a music venue that has been supported through the passion and the love that the people that run floors bring to it. 80 years of an institution supporting the roots of country music, you know, is important to me because I think country music at its best is American music. I just want to have a little tiny piece of something to do with that. And I think that's how everybody feels who comes through here. You might get intimidated looking too close at these walls. So I'm going to try to act blind before I play this show tonight because uh, just talking about it makes me nervous, man. There was a time when we thought we were going to lose it. Sure good to see that it's still there. You know?